Today we're going to talk about the role of testosterone in body fat and why you should care about it. And it's coming right up. One of the things I've always stressed is that obesity is really a hormonal imbalance, not a caloric imbalance. And perhaps nothing illustrates this more clearly than the role of testosterone in body fat. Testosterone is the principal circulating androgen in males, and androgen is a type of male hormone. 90% of it comes from the testicular Leydig cells, and 10% comes from the adrenals. So women do have testosterone as well, just much less than men. And this plays a very critical role in how much body fat we carry. It becomes very clear when you look at adolescence and puberty. So when you look before puberty, the percentage of body fat between girls and boys is relatively constant and not that much different from each other. But you can see the importance of that puberty period where there's a very striking difference in the way that males and females develop. Boys become men, they get facial hair, they become more muscular, and that's because their testosterone goes way up. Women, on the other hand, as they go through puberty, they develop more fat in their breasts and also in their hips, and they also undergo more body fat. So females continue to go up in body fat, whereas males tend to go down and gain more muscle. And it's really hard to say that it's a conscious decision on the part of every boy and every girl in the history of humanity. In fact, the body is just doing what the hormones tell it to do, which shows you the importance of hormones and not calories, which is merely the energy contained within food. It doesn't tell you what your body does with that energy, it's only the total amount of energy. Clearly, under the influence of testosterone, the boys are using that energy and building muscle, whereas the girls are using that energy and storing fat in their hips so that they're preparing for childbirth. And that's just a natural thing. There's nothing wrong with it. So if you look at the average fat-free mass, in boys and girls, under the age of about 13, they're pretty much the same, and then there becomes this striking difference. You see the same thing in adults. So with is this is important because we know that testosterone levels tend to go down in men as they get older. Is this important for body composition? And this was answered in an article in the New England Journal published in 2013 entitled Gonadal Steroids and Body Composition, Strength and Sexual Function in Men. They gave all these men um, a drug, gosarelin, to suppress their own testosterone. Then they randomly assigned people to different levels of testosterone gel. And in that way, they could really control the amount of testosterone that was in these uh, men. Um, they have two cohorts, one just got testosterone, the other got another drug, anastrozole, which would block the transition into estrogen, which is a natural um, uh, process. For our purposes, we can just look at the blue bars, which is the testosterone, because uh, most people are going to have that natural uh, conversion into estradiol. If we look at the testosterone dose, which corresponds to the testosterone levels, the, the, the men who had very high testosterone levels, in fact, had the lowest uh, levels of body fat. When you had very low levels of testosterone, these people were gaining 10 to 15% body fat, whereas the, the, the men who got the most testosterone were actually losing body fat. And instead, uh, if you look at total body lean mass, those ones with the high testosterone were gaining lean mass, presumably lots of um, uh, proteins and also lots of muscle. 
If you look at both subcutaneous as well as intra-abdominal fat, which is the more important fat for the visceral fat, you can see that important difference. And if you look at the thigh muscle, the, the men who got all that testosterone had increasing uh, muscle in their thigh and their strength in leg press increased as well. So again, highlighting the difference that it's not necessarily what you eat and the total number of calories, it's the hormones in our bodies that is gonna determine what our body does with that. And that's where testosterone makes a big difference. And also one of the reasons why the sort of caloric view of, um, uh, of weight loss and body fat is so simplistic and doesn't take these things into account. So the question is, should you replace testosterone? And this is a much more difficult uh, problem because there are potential complications and there's all these risks people are thinking with prostate cancer and heart disease. So I'll present you the guidelines which uh, were published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, which is a sort of consensus of all the experts published in uh, December 8th, 2015. And what they say is that they measure several key points and they say, one, testosterone deficiency does need both a clinical and a lab diagnosis. That is, you have to suspect that there is testosterone deficiency and have symptoms of it, and also check the lab levels so that you can treat people properly. Should you treat it? The second key point is yes, you should treat testosterone deficiency syndrome. What if they have heart disease? The third key point is yes, you should treat them even if they have heart disease. And they say that testosterone replacement therapy is appropriate in men with testosterone deficiency syndrome who have cardiovascular disease. Prostate cancer, much the same. Yes, you should treat them, but you should probably monitor them very carefully. So it's not just about measuring the testosterone levels. What you also need to do is um, check and see the appropriate people to treat. When you're checking, you should check the AM total testosterone and if equivocal, you go to the bioavailable testosterone. But who is it that we should be treating for it? And here we see that increased visceral fat or obesity is actually one of the things that they are worried about could be a sign of testosterone deficiency. When they publish their sort of uh, flow chart and they say, who should you be suspicious of testosterone deficiency? The very first things they put is type two diabetes, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome. So in all of these people, they're actually recommending to measure testosterone in the morning. Uh, or within three hours of waking, and then checking their blood levels, and if it's low, they think that it would be reasonable to replace it. Of course, this is a very difficult topic, and of course, one that you should discuss with your doctor, but again, I just wanted to highlight the role of hormones, such as testosterone, in the development of metabolic syndrome and obesity. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next week.